Okay, so Boker uh, Tov, good morning for our Sunday morning uh, Torah and coffee class. And um, as you can see, I am sort of on the road. And I always like to play the guessing game when I'm on the road. So um, perhaps you can guess where I am. Uh, I am in the second base, best place in the world after Jerusalem. The second best place in New York, maybe third best place. There's in Jerusalem, there's Brooklyn, and there is where I am now. Uh, let's see if you could guess. Shouldn't be that difficult for uh, some of you. But let's always start. We always start with a brach. It's going to be a little shaky today because, as you can see, I'm on the road, and they actually forgot to take the uh, phone holder. So I'm holding it in my hand, so it'll be a little shaky. Uh, and I'm a little shaky, meaning I'm not uh, settled. I'm sort of like in the middle of, uh, in middle of things and uh, not in a settled environment. So hopefully we'll uh, get it all across nice and clear. Uh, so first let's start with a bracha. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam shehakol niya bidvaro. Ah. Okay, Sunday morning Torah and coffee. So we have the coffee over here. Let's get to Torah. I realize, and got some feedback, is that sometimes I ask a question of, as the title of the class, and uh, sometimes in the discussion I sometimes forget to get back to and try to articulate and answer the question properly. So actually today's class is somewhat of a continuation, not totally, of last week's uh, class, which was Are You a Good Jew? And while we maybe touched upon it, we didn't really fully, uh, you know, answer the question. Let me put my glasses over here. We don't fully answer the question. So I want to I wanna address that. And I also, today's question is, are you judgmental and should you be? So a couple of thoughts, a couple of stories, and um, hopefully we'll come away, all of us, a little more inspired, a little bit more knowledgeable, etc. So the class today is inspired by two ideas. Number one, or the time that we're in. We're in the month of Elul, which we spoke about last week, which is the last of the Hebrew months of the year as we prepare for Rosh Hashanah. And it is also, yesterday we read Parshat Shoftim. We read uh, the Parsha, which begins in the following with the following statement, the Torah begins and says, Shoftim veshotrim titen lecha bechol she'arecha. You shall place for yourself judges and enforcers in all the, um, in all the gates of your land. Okay? So the Torah, the last week's Torah portion, talks a lot about uh, leadership. And it begins with the, the, the need to go ahead and have judges and have enforcers of the judgment or what you might call uh, police, police officers, because a society that doesn't have uh, uh, justice and a society that doesn't have uh, the rule of law is, 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 cannot function properly. That's, that's primary for a healthy society, right? And... Um, so, so that's the parsha. Shoftim v'shotrim titen lecha b'chol sharech. You should have judges. So, over Shabbat, I was thinking about the following question. I know we live in a society where, um, at least a certain segment of the society, we have to always be careful. By uh, the loudest segment of society doesn't necessarily represent all of society. So we're talking about judges. It made me think about the question, which we're all a little uneasy about, which is, are you judgmental? And should you be? Meaning a judge in a court of law has to judge and rule whether somebody is guilty, something, somebody's innocent, broke the law, didn't break the law, committed a crime, did not commit a crime, etc. And my question is, when you, when you watch or look or observe somebody else and their actions, um, are you judgmental? Now, naturally, I would think, and you could give us your comments back as you're listening to this class, naturally I would think that 
the natural tendency of a human being <coughs> is to be judgmental. Um, that's somewhat our natural um, reaction when we see someone else do something. And the question is, are you judgmental when you see someone do something which uh, you believe is improper, wrong? Or should you not be judgmental and say, look, I have my life, they have their life, and get ending to myself, the end of a story? Or should you definitely be judgmental? And how far does that go? Do you have... Uh, to be judgmental only in terms of, okay, I think it's wrong and that's that, or you have an obligation to tell them that it's wrong. You have to be judgmental in terms of, of thinking that person is a good person, bad person. Again, in life we are judgmental even for our own safety. I mean, if you're walking down the street, I mean, Jackie Mason passed away uh, two weeks ago, I think it was, or three weeks ago, and he, you know, part of his routine, which was, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure he would get away with it in today's uh, environment, but his part of his routine was that you know if you walked if you someone walked down the street and he and he saw a uh, a Jew down the block he would not say okay let's cross the street you know it's kind of dangerous I got to cross the street so that the the fellow doesn't uh, this 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 Jewish fellow doesn't doesn't mug me but other individuals you might not have that same uh, reaction so we're judgmental in terms of our safety and so on so th- so this is the question presented and and I want to address that. Um, first, by um, also introducing a, a uh, nuance in the Torah statement. And there's a lot that can be said uh, w- with the limitation of time. And that's why I also ask that when you hear this class, you're welcome to, uh, as, uh, to ask a question and hopefully we can address it the following week or if I see it while I'm giving class I'll try to address it uh, on, on, you know, while we're giving class but um, the Torah says I mean let me back up I want to I I try to put this in the proper order last week we asked the question are you a good Jew? I don't know what you answered yourself. Are you a good Jew or not? And the answer to that question can be given from various perspectives. First, you have to ask yourself, what does it mean to you to be a good Jew? What does that mean, to be a good Jew? Does it mean that you don't harm anybody? Does it mean that um, that you uh, are kind and giving? What does it mean to be a good Jew? And only then can you answer the question, are you, do you, do you, um, do you fulfill that requirement? Is a good Jew mean somebody who prays every single day? Is a good Jew mean somebody who uh, keeps all the commandments in the Torah? Is that a good Jew? And if you fall short on that, you're not a good Jew. You know, how do you, how do you define and answer that question? So, <clears throat> I want to give several perspectives. And that, I think, will also help us in terms of being judgmental, both of yourself, because even yourself, the, 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 there's a, a, a line from the, I think, the previous Rebbe, a very important line, who said... That just like you're not supposed to speak negative, negatively about a fellow human being, you're also not supposed to speak negatively about yourself. So in terms of being judgmental, before we answer the question, should you or should, not, should you not be, um, you also have to ask the questions also upon yourself. Some people are very judgmental, meaning they're very harsh on themselves to their own detriment, and uh, it's not healthy. And it's not, it's not healthy and it doesn't motivate them necessarily to be better. So these are, these are very important questions. So first, let's try to answer one question at a time over here. Okay? A bunch of questions. Many questions were asked over here. So, Ashton's, what does it mean to be a good Jew? I want to give various perspectives. Um, and maybe start sort of from the core and, and branch out from there. 
the core of what it means to be a good Jew has to start from um, from a certain basic acceptance and belief of Judaism, which is that what makes something right or wrong it's not there's not moral rel- relativism what makes something right and wrong is that we believe that God gave us the Torah and the Torah is the guide of what makes something right or wrong that is a fundamental principle and core belief where we must start from because we're talking about a Jew we're talking about Judaism and of course the message is also beyond Jews and Judaism but as Jews we receive the Torah at Mount Sinai and so on so when you ask yourself what does it mean to be a good Jew you have to uh, uh, address it from a sort of Jewish perspective Jewish perspective truth or not truth or 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 right and wrong is decided and determined strictly by Torah otherwise it's not a Jewish perspective it might be a perspective of some Jews it might be a perspective of some human beings fine human beings but it's not a Jewish perspective the Jewish perspective is a Torah perspective so that is a core belief where we have to start from and based on that perspective so whenever you ask yourself am I doing something am I being Am I, am I a good person? Before judging yourself, you have to ask yourself, okay, what does the Torah's approach to this? Now, there are certain things that the Torah gives very clear and direct guidance. Okay, should I uh, have pork at, at my kid's bar mitzvah? That's, that's you know, very clear. And if, if you don't, uh, and if you don't follow that, then you're not being a good Jew. It's just, it's just, there's, there's no, you know, politically correct way to say that. You're not acting at that point as a good Jew. Which, by the way, to digress for a moment, there, there is, when you ask yourself to, whether you're a good Jew, it also has two, uh, two, um, two answers. There's the more, there's the answer is, am I behaving correctly? And that is very clear. And then, am I a good person? Am I a good person in terms of how God will view me from the lens of Torah that he gave us and told us how we should conduct ourselves so someone could sometimes uh, make mistakes or even um, make bad choices or behave not well but it doesn't make them a bad person because they still have good within them and they have a good core they've just made a bad decision so so I hope that's clear Um, and remember as I've said always this is Sunday morning Torah and coffee. So we schmooze, we schmooze. Where are we holding over here? So that's one, that's an important thing. When you ask yourself, am I a good Jew? You have to say, okay, what does Torah say about this? So in terms of being judgmental, let's take it to the next level, next step. Sorry for that construction background noise. Um, the Torah then goes on and this week's Torah portion says you shall place judges but here the Torah has a word to yourself which seems like an extra extra word you should place judges for yourself And it's talking about judges you should put on the gates of your city. So many of the ethicists and commentaries on the Torah tell us that the Torah over here is giving us an additional inner instruction that a person must place judges upon them himself or herself. Meaning you have to be judgmental in terms of your own gates. What are your own gates? Your own gates are your mouth your brain of course your your ears what you allow in what you allow in to your own thinking and system whether it's food whether it's ideas whether it's emotions and so on you must place gates you must are you must place judges and you have to have a system of enforcement to make sure that 
the judgment that you come to the conclusion that this is something I need to keep away from me, you have to have a method of enforcing that. You have to be, I guess, call it judgmental. With regards to yourself, let's talk about first about yourself. I want to mention a Hasidic story. There's a Hasidic story, I believe, with the Alter Rebbe, I think that was. The Alter Rebbe is the founder of the Hasidic movement. Who Once a disciple of his came, and I don't remember all the names, but the, the point is very clear. A disciple of his came to him and said to him, Rebbe, I have a problem. There's negative and unholy thoughts that keep on entering into my mind. What do I do? And the Rebbe said to him, and they're destructive, they're destructive, they're unholy, they're, they arouse uh, the wrong things, etc., etc. Vazalichton, what do I do? So the Rebbe says, go to so-and-so, and he sends him to one of his other disciples. He comes to his other disciple, he arrives there, it's late at night, or the real early morning, and he starts to knock on the door, it's kind of chilly outside and he wants to get in, he wants to lay down, he's tired from, from the travels and nobody answers. He's knocking, he's calling, nobody answers. Finally, like in the morning, uh, 7, 8 o'clock, the door opens, his friend sees him, he says, welcome, come around, come in, so glad to see you, etc., etc. And his friend says to him, did you not hear me knocking last night? Did you not hear me trying to get in? He says, I did. So he says, so why didn't you let me in? He says, look, this is my home, and in my home I will allow whatever and whenever I decide that's what, when and whoever I'll, I'll allow in. In other words, he, I guess either the Rebbe might have sent him a message, I don't know, but he was trying to teach him that he has full control over what he lets into his home, what he lets into his mind, what he lets into his body and soul and so on. You have to go ahead and place judges on your own gates. You can't. And this is such an important message because, you know, <laughs> you know, we all grew up and it still exists. Baruch Hashem in the United States of America, we live in a land of plenty. And you go to a restaurant or you go to a simcha, you go to a wedding, you go to a bar mitzvah and there's a smorgasbord and you basically have of all, every single type of food, whether it's sushi or, or knishes or, 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 or ve- vegetables and fancy dishes and traditional dishes, kishka, and whatever, whatever it might be. And you just, it's just a choice of everything. And, and as society has become such that there's, everything is available. And so too, in terms of media, in terms of news, in terms of, of, of exposure to the entertainment, the, everything is out there at the fingertips and they get pushed uh, upon us. Anytime we open up, we just, we just, we, we just connect. And therefore, the parsha is so important in telling us, Shoftim v'shotrim titein l'cha b'chol sha'arecha. You shall place judges upon yourself. So that's, in the answer to the question, are you a good Jew? I want to maybe give two or three perspectives. The first perspective is before deciding what comes in, what you allow in, what, what comes into your gate, the basic definition of a Yid, of a Jew is, of a proper Jew is, what does Torah what does God's wisdom, God's instruction say? Is this a yes or is this a no? Is this idea? You want to know whether it's a political idea, whether it's a social idea. Is it right? Is it wrong? Who makes that decision? And what are you basing it? On, on, on media? On majority? I mean, let, let's talk about judgmentalism of others and we'll get back to this thought and idea. Again, we're schmoozing over here, Sunday morning. Uh, talking about judging others. Judging others, there's two, there's two, there's, there's judging the person, there's judging the actions. The Gemara says, the Talmud, the Mishnah, the, 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 the Pirkei, in the Ethics of the Fathers, it says a very important statement. It says, Do not judge your friend unless you are in his place. Or as the Modern English version of that is, do not judge your friend unless you are in their shoes, in his or her shoes. The Mishnah also says, in Ethics of the Fathers, 
You should judge every single person favorably. If you're not sure, you're not certain, you're not this, you have, you have doubt, judge them favorably. There are many insights into these statements of the Mishnah. At the same time, the Torah tells us, if you see something doing somebody, something wrong, it's a biblical obligation. You should go ahead and you should admonish and try to correct your, your friend and tell them, you know, what you're doing is wrong. You, 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 you have no right to say this is his life or her life and this is my life and it's not my business. The only time you could say that is if you're certain that your words would not be accepted or they will act in a, in a contrary way that will actually make the situation worse. But other than that, you have an obligation to try to, 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 to be responsible and caring to a fellow human being. And if you see that they're doing something that's wrong, you have an obligation. It's a, it's a verse in the Torah, in Leviticus. You should admonish your friend. And you shouldn't carry a sin by not preventing them from doing something sinful. So there has to be an element of judgmentalism. So... The difference is, one of the key differences is that there is one thing is to judge the person and there's another thing is to judge the action. The action is totally wrong. The person might be very uh, justified, and uh, justified is not the right word. The person might be going through a very difficult time. The person might be, uh, uh, you don't know their struggles, you don't know their weaknesses, you don't know their temptations, etc., etc. So don't judge the person. But the action is a different story. I say this also because, uh, you know, probably, what is it, 30 years ago, uh, you know, in terms of society, we threw God... Let, let, let me back up. Let me back up for a second. You could ask a very important question. You know, who determines what's right and wrong? Um, so, it's a tough question, um, and it's not a tough question. For a believing Jew like myself, it's not a tough question because the determination, the, you know, there's no, there's no, to us it's very simple. There's a God, He gave us a Torah, and that is a moral, that's absolute, and that's absolute, and therefore moral right or wrong is, is absolute. It's not, there's no moral relativism. There was in society once, uh, I don't know, 30, 30 years ago, we basically threw God out of the schools and and out of society, out of the colleges. So once you throw God Almighty out of the picture, who determines what's right and wrong? What makes something right and wrong? Society says so, Hollywood says so, uh, social media says so. What makes something right and wrong? You know, if, 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 is right and wrong determined by whether you hurt somebody, but you yourself could do whatever you want, uh, as long as you're not hurting anybody, is that right and wrong? I don't know. When the lion kills the, 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 the gazelle, is the lion wrong? The lion is hungry. I mean, I heard yesterday, yesterday someone was telling me they were in a class in, in college, and uh, the professor uh, asked a question, uh, is, it, is it okay to steal a, peel, a pair of shoes? And one of the students answered, unchallenged, that, uh, you know, if I need a pair of shoes and someone else has uh, more than one pair of shoes and I need it and I want it, there's nothing wrong with me stealing that pair of shoes. Is that a, is that a right logic? You know, perhaps if there's no moral absoluteness. That, now I understand why one of the Ten Commandments is low tignab, you should not steal. Why would God even need to tell us not to steal? Because left to the human intellect and human, human moral uh, relativism, you could come to a conclusion as societies have throughout history, that, yeah, why not? You have a lot, I have a little. There's no reason why I cannot take a pair of shoes that, is, that doesn't belong to me. So, the answer, of course, is that we, don't, we, don't, we accept Torah, we accept mitzvahs, we accept God created the world. In His kindness, He gave us a Torah that tells us what's right and wrong. So if you're going to ask yourself, are you a good Jew? Are you asking yourself, do you have to, to judge, be judgmental of someone else's actions? The answer is absolutely. If it's in line with what Torah tells us, then it's right. If it's not in line with what Torah tells us, then it's wrong. 
Should you judge the person, not the actions, not the deeds? Here the Mishnah tells us, Al Do not judge a person unless you are in their shoes. In fact, you have to treat them lovingly and, 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 and as best as possible. Try to um, correct their ways, etc. So I think that that more clearly answers the questions of last week and this week. If you still have any further questions, you're definitely you know, welcome to address it. And, and this is also very important because we're in the month of Elul. The month of Elul is when we prepare for Rosh Hashanah. And we come to God and say, give us a better year. And we say to Hashem, we're, we're going to repent. But re- repent to what? If there is no, uh, if we're both for ourselves and our kids. I mean, thank God in, in Florida, they instituted a moment of silence, which is a beginning of bringing back a little bit of morality, absolute morality, hopefully, because parents telling their children during this moment of silence to think about God, to think about an absolute power, it's a, it, it's a tragedy that God was thrown out of our institutions of education. Because a child is not just there to be taught academics. You have to develop the soul of the child. And if the child believes in an absolute power, how much, uh, how much better will that the child develop as a moral person good human being. So this is this is the, the thought for today for Chodesh El. I might have had some more ideas to think about, to, to speak about, but I think we've we've made the points fairly clear. And uh, you know let it both inspire all of us. I, I actually I did have one more thought. There's another perspective to ask yourself are you a good Jew or not a good Jew? And I wanted to share this last week and I and I forgot to share this. Other perspective is also depends a lot on your upbringing, and it depends also in which direction you're going. Let me explain. If you are a Jew that grew up, like myself, in a religious home, just because God decided that my soul should come down to parents who were religious, and uh, you do things just by route, and uh, or root, and by route, I think, right? I always confuse those two words. And um, you have no life and energy and you're heading downwards, meaning in your spiritual connection, uh, you're heading downwards. And even when you pray, you don't necessarily talk to God. You're just saying the words because just out of habit. Versus uh, a Jew who maybe was born in a non-religious home and is making efforts in connecting to their roots. And the few words, or the once a week, or whatever it might be, when they talk to God, they talk to God. They have a relationship with God. When they have an issue, they turn to God. On the latter, they might be on step one or step two, but they're heading to step three. Versus the um, practicing Jew, because he was born into that environment, is maybe on step seven, because he's learned all his life, or she has studied, but they're heading down to step six. Or step five, who is the better Jew? I would say that the individual who is on step two but heading up to three is a better Jew. So there are various perspectives to address and answer this question. Um, And uh, perhaps you have your own suggestion and you're welcome to share that with us. So have a fantastic, fantastic week, a fantastic day. Thank you for listening. And please share these words of Torah, and I would love to hear your feedback.